Want to advertise your business in a cost-effective way? It's time to give podcast advertising a try. Research shows a high rate of podcast listeners made a purchase as a result of an ad they heard on a podcast. Visit podbean.com slash brands to launch a cost-effective podcast advertising campaign in minutes. That's P-O-D-B-E-A-N dot com slash brands. Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor in the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. We're also on Dash Radio on their Nothing But Net channel. That's every single weeknight at 7 p.m. Also, check us out on Five Reasons YouTube. Before floor, an hour before every game. Post up 5R as soon as the game ends. Of course, Dono Daily goes daily at 3 o'clock. And also, you can catch me on Starting 9 every Tuesday and Wednesday at 9 a.m. We do a lot of heat there as well. So make sure you like, you subscribe. We just went over 16,000 subscribers this weekend, so we thank you. 5 sports.com. Make sure you spell that one out. The latest takeaways from Brady Hawk and the latest pieces from around the network. Obviously, we're going to have a lot of Dolphins coverage this week if they decide to hire a coach or two coaches. Maybe they'll do co-coaches this year. Who knows? Uh, check it out on 5 sports.com. Also, Check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. If you need IT, we always tell you to go to TJ. Okay, real simple. IT, go to TJ. CPT of South Florida. I know that's a lot of initials we've got here, but CPT of South Florida is where you want to go if you need cloud-hosted phone systems or managed IT. They also can help you with security. I don't mention this too much, but that might be the most important thing that they do. All right. If you have security issues, your company's getting bigger, you're using a lot of IT, but you're worried that somebody's going to be hacking into that thing, reach out to CPT of South Florida. TJ, big Miami sports fan. Phone number is 954-966-2766. That's 954-966-2766. 2766, and he's still got this deal going on, this promotion, 25% off cloud phone service, including free phones and the first two months of service free. So deal with an owner, not a sales rep. Give TJ a call at CPT. Again, that's 954-966-2766 or cpt-florida.com. And now, tonight's episode. Down to this gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck is saying, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop with one hand. And pack with trust, it's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Ethan Skolnick back on Five on the Floor. Here's tonight's floor plan. Got Greg Sylvander. You can follow him at Greg Sylvander. And I've got Alex Toledo. You can follow him at Tropical Blanket. Alex survived the three overtime game there the other night uh, with Brady. The Heat, of course, lose to the Raptors. Uh, they lose on the second night of a back-to-back, which we told you has been a problem. They're now two and six on the season in the second night of back-to-back. So they got a back-to-back coming up now, uh, challenging one in Boston and Toronto. Uh, they do not have Kyle Lowry for the first game of this trip. He's still out for personal reasons, uh, as we've been telling you. And, and obviously uh, now the Jimmy Butler situation becomes a bit of an issue because he's now listed as questionable. We'll see if he plays uh, with that troublesome ankle. But we're going to focus on one guy today who we know is going to play but is not really playing to the level offensively that I think a lot of us projected or maybe hoped. And we just figured we need to deal with it at this point. He's been back now for a week and a half. He's been playing at a really high level defensively. I don't think that's the question, so we're not even going to cover that here. But we've been focusing on Bam Adebayo in terms of his aggression, right? That has been the whole thing. I gave this whole spiel a couple of weeks ago about what we wanted to see from him. And so, yeah, that has been a problem, okay? When, when you're not, you don't have shot attempts in three overtimes, that's an issue, okay? Particularly when we've seen how ball dominant Jimmy has been in those situations and how poorly Tyler shot uh, in the three overtimes uh, against Toronto. But it's not just the aggression, Greg. And that's what we're going to dive into here with Greg and Alex. The numbers are not great this year. The shooting numbers are not great. And, and there's also a couple of other numbers. I mean, just generally, the raw points per game number is down from 18.7 to 17.8. Um, his overall shooting, but I know you're going to break this down more specifically, is down from 57% to a career low 51%. That's what he shot as a rookie. Um, his rebounds are up from last season, but again, we're focusing on the scoring here. 
And then you look at the playmaking. He's down. His assists are down from 5.4 to 3.6. We figured some of that would happen with Lowry. But the turnovers are up from 2.6 to 3.1. The turnovers shouldn't be going up when the assists are going down. His assist to turnover ratio has essentially gone from 2 to 1 to 1 to 1, which is a significant drop. Pat Riley said, I think you're going to see a pure scorer this year. That's the expectation that he set for Bam. Have we seen a pure scorer this year? Pure score? No, I don't think that we can in good conscience say that. Uh, I think that he is, um, you know, it's funny as we started to to talk about what, when, when, that we were going to address this Bam out of bio offense topic, and I dug into the shooting numbers as you referenced it's really crazy when you see it year over year, the stark difference. And, and it almost looks as if he's uh, you could categorize it in a bit of a slump, but you, we wouldn't have talked about Bam Adebayo being in a shooting slump. But just to like give this some, some context uh, from less than five feet, uh, Bam Adebayo shooting 68 percent this year. Last year, he was at 75 percent shots from five to nine feet. He, he's shooting 31 and a half percent this year. Last year, he shot 48 percent and uh, shots from 10 to 14 feet. He's at 35 percent this season versus 47 percent last season, basically on the same volume in all of those tiers. Uh, slightly weighted towards the less than five feet. He's getting six attempts. Uh, a game this year. So like, that's the, that's the thing that's a little concerning is that um, he also is not necessarily taking a ton of shots from the five to nine feet foot range. And you would think that would be his comfort zone. And for some reason that he hasn't found some consistent rhythm or touch around that area. And he finds himself in that area so often. So to me, like that's the kind of stuff that's concerning. I don't want to make too much of this because, and we'll probably get into the reasons why maybe this stuff has happened later, but the raw numbers tell us that uh, this is more than just Bam not being aggressive. He's also not being efficient. I think these two things are connected, Alex. I think the lack of efficiency may be leading to his lack of aggression because I think there's a lack of confidence. And, and often we do see that those two things are tied together. But before we get to the reasons, again, the specific lack of aggression, let's just get into why he's not shooting as well. Do you see, is there something wrong from what you're seeing with his form? Is it maybe where he's getting the touches? How do you, I mean, it's a significant drop. Like I mean, he is, he's come down a lot from where he was last year. And at this point we can't really, I know his knee was bugging him, but I don't think it is now. I mean, what do you think it is? I mean, I definitely don't think it's like the stroke is bad because aesthetically, visually, it looks exactly as it ever has. And I think we've all kind of appreciated as heat observers the fact that, that it's always been there. It's always looked good. And he's always been a good free throw shooter. So all of that has kind of tracked throughout the years. And I think it's less to do with his actual jump shot and the way it's being used. Right. I think like just we came into the season expecting for Bam to be a much more efficient scorer to have everything kind of put for him on a plate. And obviously there's been guys in and out. It's not like they've been able, he's been able to play with Lowry and the team. I was supposed to be built the whole season. And we saw flashes of what we wanted to see when the team was healthy. Bam was getting a, a whole lot of um, attempts rolling to the rim. And, and that's a lot of the stuff that you want, right? A lot, and a lot less of him having to create for other guys. So although his usage is almost identical to what it was last season, his true shooting percentage is way down. Uh, like you mentioned, He's the assist to turnover stuff is way is, is just not as good as it was. His assist percentage is way down. He's still getting to the free throw line, right? He gets the free throw line six times as opposed to Jimmy's A. So he's giving you value there. But as an actual pure score, like what Riley said, I think they made a mistake putting that pressure on him because it's clear not only that he's not there, but also that the organization, at least Spo and the coaching staff, doesn't think he's there because they don't use him in that way. They don't use him as somebody who is this uh pure scoring talent and look i i I went to go make sure by looking at the actual shot attempts per game before this pod and he's third you know third on the team in shot attempts per game look at tyler yeah no tyler is way ahead he tyler's like two and a half (laughs) shots ahead of jimmy per game we know the context there was a lot of time where it was it was the kyle and tyler show there's a lot of noise there but bam being at 13 uh, field goal attempts a game is a little low for me when you look at uh, Jimmy's 15 and Tyler's 17.5 or whatever it was. And like 
we thought of him as somebody who could be a comparable scoring talent to these guys, and that's not really the way he's being used. It feels like when he's taking these jumpers that still look good aesthetically, it's almost like the last option in the play. And I feel mm. like we've gone back towards some of that because that's what was going on during the last two seasons where they didn't have Lowry and they were kind of just go- running the show through Jimmy and Bam, where Jimmy's show is, you know, getting to the line. I mean, sorry, getting to the rim and making stuff happen, whether it's for him or for others or getting to the free throw line, whereas Bam show is like creating for others, screening, getting that uh, rim roll attempt. But it's not really like scoring for himself. And we talked about how they haven't really you know, run that playbook for him. And I just feel like now he's taking these shots that are kind of like, you know, end of the shot clock, not in rhythm. He's not getting in rhythm as a scorer. They're not using him in that way. But Alex, let, think, let, let me gotta figure let, out. Let, let me stop you there. How, how much of that is him and how much of that is them? Because I, I do feel that part of the Riley comment was putting pressure on Spolstra in addition to Bam. Oh, because yeah. if you if you remember the previous uh, Riley presser at the end of the season, and I asked him about, you know, whether certain guys have it or they don't in terms of, you know, being score. And if you could build that and he went on this riff about Bam and how, you know, Eric maybe can use him differently. And then he follows up by saying, I think you're going to see a pure scorer this year. It feels like it was a challenge to both of them, to both Bam and to Spo. You talk about the shot attempts this year. I mean, they're basically the I'll same. I mean, he's yeah. I mean, yeah. He's from twelve point four to twelve point nine, it's 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 pretty much an irrelevant jump. I mean, it he, he's pretty much it's pretty much the same as I mean, his minutes. All of the definitely... increase is coming right around the rim. Right, right, exactly. And and the minutes are basically the same as last year, so it's it's not that it's it's thirty three point five versus and again. So is the usage almost identical? Right. So so essentially, he is a carbon copy of what we saw last year. He's just less efficient. I think and in a I, different role is what is the biggest thing here. Isn't it clearly but, a different role? But but that's the thing. It's a different role. But the role was supposed to get bigger. Like that that was the whole thing. Like I think I, th- th- there's mm-hmm. really two things going on here. Okay, I think, and, and I think we need to break them down separately. And then after the break, I think that we need to go through each of these areas: his post game, his face up game, and all, we should touch on all of them. Okay, but but I do think two different things are happening here. Where it, honestly, it has not met expectations. Okay, I just think we have to be clear on that offensively defensively he's tremendous he's tremendous he's top three in the league and he's probably not two or three okay but uh, offensively like a couple things have one like you said he's not being used in a way to really get him more looks so that didn't happen like the the riley you know i suppose done a tremendous job with uh, many many things as we've talked about but that has not happened okay and then the second thing is bam has not really improved in the areas that would would compel Eric to run more for him. Again, it's another chicken of the egg thing because he has been a less efficient in all of those spots. So it's really hard to justify going to him offensively when Jimmy may be getting to the line or Tyler may be going or some of these other guys who popped this year uh, are playing well, right? I mean, I'll go to Greg on this first and then after the break, Alex, I, I do want us to kind of go through all of the parts of his game. But, but who... Who is it more at this point? Like, like, why are we not seeing? Because Riley issued a challenge to both of them. I don't feel like in this particular area, either of them has really met it. No, it, it, it's funny because there's often been times where Riley, I think, has envisioned certain guys in roles. And then just the way that the game is played, it ends up being more guard heavy. And you're seeing Tyler with more shot attempts because, you know, you never know that that leap's going to come in the way that it did. Um <clears throat> the thing for Bam that I think we ju- we should just keep in mind is that he started the season basically just rim running. Lowry was doing everything um, in terms of facilitating and getting out on the break and all that fun stuff. That Those first seven games wasn't that fun. That feels like a forever ago um, where the offense was just clicking. And But Bam was not doing the stuff that Bam had done in prior years w- during that stretch. And I think that that was probably, if we all was, was to conceptualize the offense looking its best, that was when it did. Um, and then Lowry's out, Jimmy's out. So Bam has to shift his game. All of a sudden, he's starting to initiate offense. All of a sudden, his assists start to go up where, you know, at the beginning of the year, he was barely getting any assists. So he's had to kind of, shift roles throughout the year i don't think it helps that his wrist has been hurt like that's something that is tied to offense and and getting to the basket and feeling comfortable so um those are just things that i think we need to take into account i don't think that there are excuses you know that bam is is my uh my boy so you know i'm going to try to 
rep him every time I can. And you can't, the numbers don't lie. He's obviously not been as efficient, but there are factors that go into that. There are factors. And again, I want to touch on more of them after the break. We're going to go through all of it, but I'm taking them at their own words. Bam said, I'm going to shoot threes this year. He hasn't made a three. Um, <laughs> right. I, I mean, I just, I'm just going through it. I mean, like we said, we, we take, take them at their own words on what sort of the ambition was this year. And as many things that have gone right through what 50, what are we at now? 51 games of the season. This is something. And, and I, I still believe this to get to their, their final form. Okay. There need to be some bam out of bio takeover games. There are just games where he, he, he has on paper matchups that should be favorable. If they're going to win a championship, it doesn't have to be every game, but there has to be a quarter here. There has to be a game here where bam can do it. And we've seen it on occasion this year, but, but I think maybe even less than we saw last year, which I, is not what we anticipated. All right. We're going to talk about this more as we go forward here, but we want to tell you the Miami marathon's coming up next week. Um, if you're a distance runner, uh, you do endurance sports, whatever. Maybe you want to be the next Rafael Nadal, right? You play a lot of tennis. You got to check out Get Salise, okay? It's actually called Salise, but you go to GetSalise.com, G-E-T-S-A-L-I-S.com. Use the code 5RSN. You'll get 10% off there every uh you get 10 percent off there the supplements and again this is where you want to go if you want to replace your electrolytes okay you want to get back out there you want to be able to to perform longer go to get salise.com replace your electrolytes in a healthy way not just by pounding a bunch of gatorade order it now okay to get it as quickly as you possibly can so monday you hear this go to get salise.com and make your order use the code 5 rsn for 10 percent off there all right. Um, let's go through it piece by piece here, uh, because, you know, we talk about there are different levels you can score from. Right, Alex? So we're just going to go one at a time. Has he made any improvement in his post game? Not that they go to that much, but has has he made any improvement in his post game, in your opinion, Alex? I mean, honestly, not enough. Like, I think there's still plenty of times where he gets somebody smaller than him and he will. Like, I'll give him credit for recognizing the mismatch, right? But a lot of times, and this has been pointed out before, um, he's really looking to draw two and to kind of kick out from there and, and make the, pla- the, the pass from there and make the right play. And I get that. But the problem is, just like with the dribble handoff stuff, if everybody knows you're going to go past it, like, people are going to start, are going to stop throwing two at you every time there's a mismatch. Like, it's going to happen less and less, especially when you go into the playoffs and um, some of the better defenses, like let's say you go up against the Bucks. I'm sure after a couple of games of seeing some of Miami's actions, they're going to start to realize like, yeah, Bam's not really going to try to take advantage of that. He's going to try to get the second guy to come so he can make the pass, but he's not really actually trying to score. And I think he can. Like, I think he, it's, it's a very, it, it's all on like him just backing down a small guy and giving him a, a nice basic post move. Like he doesn't even need to learn an arsenal of post moves. When you got a smaller guy on you, it becomes a lot easier. Like you just don't need to, you don't need to do as much. And I think that's why it's become like, no, don't run the ball through him in the post. But when he's got that mismatch, you got to take advantage. And this definitely um, applies towards the aggression stuff we've gone over the past couple of seasons. But like I said, just like w- with every other conversation with Bam, it's a coaching thing too. And you know me, none of us here are ripping on Spo, but this is kind of the, you refer to the chicken and egg stuff with Bam. I think this is kind of the theme here because it's like, well, if he's really that guy, why aren't they empowering him in that way? Because we've seen them empower their guys, their foundational players, like Tyler Hero, the past couple of seasons before he turned and, and before he he took this leap that he has. They've kind of put him in those positions where it's like, okay, these are the best spots for him to turn into the player that we envision him to become. And they, the Heat haven't really put Bam in that process. Like, they've looked at him as a scorer. I get he's, a, he's third in attempt, so it's not like, you know – he, he's he near the bottom of, of the rotation and attempts or anything. It's not crazy. like It's not crazy low, his attempts. I just think it's like there's plenty of opportunities throughout a game. You're trying to get openings on a defense, and when you get a small guy on you, that's one right there. And it's kind of like, why isn't that being taken advantage of more? You know, there's a part of this, I can't help but say it, that – you feel like Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler for either, for either one of those guys, not Jimmy. Jimmy is doing what Jimmy does. I mean, he's at the height of his powers. But for Bam, they kind of use the same spaces of the floor, the same quadrants of the floor, we'll oh, yeah. say, 
Um, and, and so I think that that's an interesting dynamic in terms of maximizing BAM. Defensively, we're seeing that all of this stuff is being maximized. But when you look at him shooting uh, 68% from less than five feet, just to give you guys perspective, and he shot 75% last year. DeAndre Ayton is at 75. Gobert, 74. Jimmy Butler is at 64 and a half. Domas uh, Sabonis, 72%. So, like, essentially, Bam Adebayo of last year was finishing better than all of these guys, you know, in the post and around the rim. And this year, it's just kind of been less than that. And so, to me, there you can't say that he has made strides, I think, uh, around the rim and in, in the post. All right, we're going to move out a little bit further here because I know you have some of these numbers, the post stuff, but it gets worse as you kind of get into this mid-range area compared to last year. So we're going to talk about that next. Before we do, we got a watch party Monday night at quarter deck. This is the one in Davie, the one on University Drive. We've been out there before. You might want to bring a sweater. Sometimes we hang out outside. Okay, we've got a really nice spot out there, but it's Heat Celtics. 7.30, we'll be out there starting at 7. I got a bunch of Five Reasons hats. I'm going to be giving them out to the first four people who show up to the watch party who are not with the network. Okay, so come out to Quarter Deck over at, again, it's on uh, in, it's uh, University Drive in Davie. You know about the place. They got, great, obviously, great wings. We get the buffalo shrimp out there for everybody, um, and we have some drink specials going on there as well. And, of course, they got a full bar with all the beer that you could possibly want. And, they actually, they serve Biscayne Bay Brew, the official beer of the Five Reasons Sports Network. So come out to Quarter Deck. This is tomorrow or Monday, as you're listening to this, for Heat Celtics. We'll be out there starting at about 7 o'clock. All right, let's go out a little bit further here. Um, Greg, you, you touched on these numbers, and I'm going to go to Alex on it, though. You know, we talk about empowering him, but again, the ball's got to go in, right? Uh, if he's going to be empowered more, I, I know you said his form looks fine, but sometimes it feels to me like he, like it's not just that he's the last option on offense, it's that he views himself as the last option on offense. Mm-hmm. And so he's kind of taking those shots in the mid range area as sort of like, okay, excuse me, nobody else really did anything here, so I'll turn and shoot. And it doesn't always feel to me like it's in rhythm like it could be. Is I mean, do you see that? Oh, I agree with you 100%. It was kind of um, what I uh, was alluding to a little bit in the beginning of the show when we were talking about the mid-range stuff, just like the, the shot looks good. It, it, I just wish that he would actually look to get the shot off before the end of the buzzer when he's starting. When, you know, when the shot clock is starting to um, go down and he's feeling the pressure, right? I just think... Um, he has that confidence in his shot. I do believe that. And I, I and, and right back to that theme of chicken and egg, like if he's not taking that shot, because I know he knows that he has that shot. The three is a whole other conversation. But like it's happened before. He's t- he's gotten better in that every single season except this season. Uh, like we talked about in the chat, it's kind of plateaued. And I'm looking at his mid-range stuff right now on dunksandthrees.com. The mid-range percentage went down by 10 from last season, just the way that they categorize That's it. That's so staggering. Obviously- that's yeah, just it's a, crazy. It's a huge dip. So I, I do think um, if he were to get some better looks, better in rhythm looks for sure, that number will go up. A lot of this has to do with Lowry. Because I, I, like we said, like we saw some of those flashes, right, where Lowry would get him the ball back in times where like, okay, no, you don't need to be giving it up. So part of the stuff we're talking about with the post mismatches and here with the jump shots, it's like Kyle Lowry is very good at being that floor general and putting Bam in those positions. Now, it didn't happen as much as we wanted, like like Leif was talking about. It was a lot of rim rolling stuff, and I think that's part of the conversation too, is like I think Spo thinks that the offense runs better when they're playing sort of at that pace, and it's less of the Jimmy Bam show trying to create from the elbows, because I just don't think he, he looks at Bam in that same level, because obviously Jimmy has proven it uh, for years and years of being an, an all-star scorer, whereas Bam is kind of on that process to becoming that. And I think that has never been more obvious in this season where we came into the season thinking that Bam could kind of close that gap a little bit between them as scorers from the elbow. But he's just not there yet. They're not besides the fact that they're not really running those sets like he he doesn't look to do it himself. So I don't know. The whole thing is like he, he needs to take more open in rhythm shots. I don't think it's a thing where they need to run the ball through him, run the offense through him, and, and put him as the number one scorer. I, I just don't think that's something that's going to happen overnight. Like, he needs to develop into that. But the fact that it's going backwards is not the sign you want. So I, I'm just hoping that w- when, when the team is healthier again, they go back to taking better shots, and hopefully that gets Bam 
a little bit more confident in rhythm to take those better shots instead of waiting to the end of the, the shot clock. Greg, I got a couple of philosophical questions for you here. Um, well, first, before I get to that, to me, one of the more frustrating things about watching this, because we know how skilled Bam is um, and how hard he works. I mean, these are all positives is that it seems to me sometimes like PJ Tucker is more aggressive and more confident in his offensive ability than Bam Adebayo is. And that just should not be the case. I mean, when they run offense through PJ, he's looking to make plays at times, even for himself, which is not something we thought he would do this year. Uh, and Bam hasn't, that has jumped out to me, but here's the other thing. It seems to me like a lot of what we're talking about with this plateauing, which is not what we expected, sounds similar to some of the conversations we had about Tyler in his second year, uh, you know, as compared to his first, that that really he didn't get worse, but he didn't get better. Like I, in the ways that he got better in some subtle ways. OK, but not the ways that necessarily translated to the stat sheet. Right. And and so, uh, you know, I, I don't want to overreact to a lot of this. Bam's not having a bad year. Yeah, but because de- defensively. He's no, no, like defense, doing master class stuff it's, it's, every we, night. Yeah. We and and you total, acknowledge that. Of course. We could do a totally separate podcast on Bam Adebayo and his greatness defensively. And I think we touch on that pretty much every night. Okay. When, when they play, I mean, that nobody is questioning that. All right. A Bam. And no, and, and I've never questioned whether he's worth a max contract because what he provides to this team is worth that. What I'm questioning again, and I want to get to the hero thing, but what I'm questioning again is whether this team can win a championship if Bam is just going to be this, which is an elite defensive player who's kind of a third or fourth and sometimes makes himself a fifth option offensively and doesn't and 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 more strikingly the fourth quarter. I mean, th- th- that's been the big thing here. Like they've struggled down the stretch of games. It looks like they need something else. OK, now maybe it's Kyle. Maybe it's Kyle's return, but this idea of like Jimmy just being completely ball dominant down the end of games or when Tyler plays, you know, and Tyler is off, you know, like he was against Toronto and having to keep going to him. It would be nice to have, you know, your max guy who, who has a lot of skills as at the very least a relief option. And he hasn't been that. So that's a lot of of stuff there, but I I guess. um, So let's start here. Um, the, the fact that sometimes PJ looks more com- more comfortable in that role than Bam does what for you? I mean, I, I mean, is that good on PJ or is that does that speak to or am I overreacting to that? Um, no, I don't think you're overreacting. I think PJ is just as as excited and as confident as he's ever been in his, in, in his entire life. And Bam, is not that. So it could just look that way. I mean, I think the field goal attempts speak for themselves. Oh, right. Ultimately, that Bam's still getting his. But there's something to be said for the confidence factor here. And, uh, you know, when you have a guy like Bam, who's clearly the the face of the of the franchise go forward or that's how they have positioned him, you want to continue to see the growth year over year. But I think Hero and what you mentioned earlier, it's really informative, like that maybe sometimes you have to take a step back to take two steps forward, et cetera. And I know that that's cliche to say, but um you know, I think if you asked Eric Spolster, he would say there's so many other things that he does that he's covering for that that scoring is all such a bonus. But to your point, Pat did not frame it that way. <laughs> so, you know, we're looking at this, you know, totally differently. All right. I got one more thing here for both of you guys after the break. It's it's in this vein. So we'll get to in a second. We do want to tell you about one more spot. So we appreciate them letting us hang out there the other night. We had a good time over at City Cigar Lounge. It's right down the street from the arena. This should be your pre and post game spot. Seriously, it's a great place to go. They got a great little food menu there. Um, I, I mean, I divulge. I mean, I. I partook in a lot of it before I went out to the game or get yourself a cigar. They got more than 350 different types of liquor there as well. Um, They run happy hour specials. It's just a great spot. It's called city cigar lounge. It's literally down the street from the arena. And the thing that I didn't know about uh, until I got down there the other day, you can park there in their garage and take a shuttle to the arena, which is pretty damn cool. You get, uh, you get a discount there on the shuttle. So check out city cigar lounge. Again, that's right in downtown Miami. You're going to find us there on a lot of nights. We're going to be running events there as well. That's going to kind of become our Dade County headquarters, and we're going to do some stuff uh, during their road games. So check it out, City Cigar Lounge. And when you go, mention Five Reasons. Real comfortable place with a ton of TVs, and it's it's just a, it's a great spot to watch a game, honestly. All right. Um, let's go forward here. Because there's the idea of can they win a championship this year if you just have Bam as what he's done. 17-point score, 
13 attempts a game, maybe one or two in the fourth, right? Um, and you hope that sort of his shooting progresses back to the mean, right? Like, so there's that. But you mentioned it, Greg. Um, so I'll start with you and then we'll close with Alex. I mean, he's a face of the franchise going forward. Like, I mean, Jimmy and Kyle are, you know, they're not on borrowed time, but we kind of know what the endpoints are going to be for both of them. Tyler, we assume is going to be here, but there's still the chance that he could be flipped uh, in a trade for another big fish. If they decide if Pat decides that they don't have enough and somebody asks out, you know, we know the we know the players we talk about, the Lillards, the Beals, etc. But Bam's going to be here like they're not flipping Bam for something else like he's going to be a face of the franchise going forward. So are, are there I, I guess, would there be a concern if one of your faces, your franchise is not a guy who's who's going to be aggressive uh, offensively, particularly down the last when it matters, right? The last, you know, crunch time, the last five minutes of games, he may dominate defensively. He may take te- teams totally out of their offense. He's done that great this year. But you want to get a little bit more on the offensive end. Does it concern you with him as one of the pillars if he's if if he if if this is what it is, if it's really good, but it's not, I mean, let's just be honest. It's not elite offensive. Yeah. No, if this is what it is, then that's not enough, but I just think he's too young and there's too much more for him to grow into it. Trust me. Like I'm not trying to be naive when you have a guy, when you see like what Dwayne did offensively early on and you know, comparing Bam to Dwayne is not necessarily fair, but just to give a visual, Like you just knew that Dwayne could just take over and that he had that in him. And Bam may never be that type of player in terms of the way that he approaches his offense. But I just don't think it's, it's would personally, I don't think that this is a plateau where he will not get any better go forward. I, I don't see that. I think that there's other things. I just truthfully, if we're being honest, he's never had a season where they've said, listen, your primary role is to play good defense and score the hell out of the basketball. That's just not what they've asked him to do. We can act like that's what they've asked him to do, but that's not truthfully what he is being put on the court to do. And maybe if he had a season like that, we would see a different mentality, but you know, uh, that's not going to be till a few years from now. Cause this is Jimmy Butler's show for now. What do you think Alex? Um, Bam right now. And I'm, I agree with late that he's going to keep getting better. I think, this season, you're talking about trying to sneak in and win a championship. We all think that um, they're good enough to compete with any of the best teams, and I- I'm still I'm still there. I think the premise that the Heat are only championship good if Bam took a leap as a scorer is a little a little unfair because I just don't believe that to be true based on what we've actually seen. Like they're just a really 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 good team the way they are. Obviously, we've seen them healthy, not healthy, and they're still beating up on teams. They're clearly better in the regular season than they have been in the past two seasons. So I think that's not even to be debated with. And the playoff stuff is obviously based on faith that some of this stuff will come through. And and I think coming into the season, we all knew that this team was built for the playoffs, right? Some of the stuff has changed when you look at the depth and it's like, okay, they can, they, they're more built for the regular season than we thought when, when you have all these guys contributing and even more kind of waiting to contribute than we could have possibly imagined, at least in the, in the current moment. And so, Projecting towards the playoffs, I think what Bam is right now, projecting that he gets a little better with the mid-range stuff. And, you know, I think once the team is healthy and finds a little bit of their stride there, I think it's going to be become a little bit more comfortable for Bam figuring out where he fits in as a scorer. I think it's enough. I think they do have enough to win a title this year. And that's why I want to make sure that the expectations are where they're supposed to be. Because the team that they've showed themselves to be this season is a contender. Now, maybe they haven't been the best or second best team in the league, but they're right up there. And I think Bam... It's going to be a matchup thing, just like many other times that we've talked about uh, the playoffs with this team. I think, like, you go up against the Bulls, it might be a really nice matchup for him with how small they are. The fact that, you know, they pretty much only got Vucevic as their big man, and and outside of that, they go very small, and they've got a lot of holes they can pick at. And we kind of saw something similar in that Boston series where he went off. I think a Brooklyn series would be a great one for Bam because he always goes off against them. We know that, but Mm -hmm. another team that kind of plays a little bit smaller. Right. And I think just doesn't have as many um, guys that they could actually throw at Bam there. So I think there's potential for Bam to look like a better score than what he's shown in the regular season, just like he did in that series versus the Celtics. But it's a matchup thing. Like, I don't think he would 
uh, look like a great score versus the Bucks with or without Brooke Lopez. They're like they're just a lot more suited to deal with Bam's athleticism and length and everything that the Heat can throw at them. So I just think what they have is enough. It's going to be a matchup game in the playoffs, and Bam just needs to kind of polish up and find the balance there as an offensive player and figuring out like how often am I going to be going for that for that rim roll? How often am I going to be actually looking to create something out of the face up and not and, and I haven't even touched on this not just look for the jump shot every time because like mm-hmm. I said we know he's mm-hmm. confident in that jump shot and he waits so too long a lot of times to do it but sometimes it's like he's only looking for that jump shot and it's like dude we know you have a, a really tight handle for a big we know you got moves that you that you've thrown out there in transition you've thrown out there in semi-transition hezzies now doing that in, in a half court offense where everything is a lot more tight I get it not you can't just do it every time but those moves need to be thrown out there more. He hit that one bank shot in transition uh, uh, last night versus the Raptors that was kind of similar. It, it, was, it just came out of nowhere, but it was a strong move to the basket, and he finished. It's like, wow, I wish he would do that more often. And so I just think it's a matter of putting it all together for Bam. I, I think we say that a lot with him. I think that's why we keep having these episodes. I wish he would do that more often. It, it, it's <laughs> This stuff's in there somewhere, and it's just a question of when it comes out. I will say, Alex, as you're going through the teams, it made me think there are very few teams in the league that are playing through their big, the good teams. Um, Philly is one, obviously. Denver is another. Milwaukee. And, and Milwaukee, because I think you call we would call Giannis a big. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. I mean, I, you know, I, I Durant is a big wing. <laughs> that's the way that I view him. Uh, and then you look out west, you know, Aiton's good. Uh, but they don't play through him. I mean, they're they're built on their two guards, obviously. Uh, Golden State, they're not playing through Draymond or Wiseman or any of that. They're playing from the outside in. Uh, Utah can't really play inside out because Gobert's not that kind of player. Ultimately, their playoff success is still determined offensively based on Donovan Mitchell and, and their shooters. So there's not a lot of teams that are playing through their big. I think maybe the fact that Pat, you know, <laughs> yearns for a time when teams did may have played into his comment about Bam. But I got to think if you gave Pat truth serum this season about Bam offensively, I, I would think he would be mildly not not significantly, but mildly disappointed that there hasn't been more. Um, and, and I That's do. Fair. I, I, yeah, and, and I do think, I do think I, that although you can say, well, they can win a championship with him being their third or fourth leading scorer um, with him not, you know, having a bunch of games. I think what you sent here in the chat, Greg, is right. You know, he had the Boston series, right? And, and memorable moments again. There are going to have to be some takeover quarters at the very least, some of them fourth quarters for them to win a title. I, I don't think they can do it without that because I think what we're starting to see is as great as Jimmy is, there are times, particularly, I think it starts to show on him late in games. His decision-making, I think, has been hurt late in games because he's carrying so much of the burden. Maybe yep. maybe earlier in the game. I think Kyle will will help that, okay, which clearly, but, but I do think we see it. Jimmy does, is not the same player in the fourth and in the overtimes as he is earlier in the game. And I, I think that's, he, I think he needs help in that regard um, earlier and later so that it's not all on him. Okay. And you're not reliant on how Tyler, you know, is going that night. And it feels to me like this team is, it, it, that's what they're a touch off. We'll see when Kyle comes back. Um, but I, I want to see, you know, I want to see the last 30 games of the year, you know, can Bam average 19. Okay. Can, it does not have to be 23, okay? Can he average 19? Can the shot attempts go up a little bit? Can the percentages go up a little bit? Um, yep. And particularly in the fourth quarter, can we not have any more zero attempt games? I just, you know, I, I just think he needs to make himself a presence because he he's he's their future. He's being paid to do so. Well, that too. And I didn't even want to get into that because I think that's, you know, I think we make too much of that sometimes. I mean, Jimmy and Kyle are being paid a lot too. But... I, I I just think that I think there's more there, um, and, and I think I think we want to see the aggressiveness go up, but the efficiency go up uh, because I think you know everybody wants to see this team reach his full potential, and if he's hit a bit of a ceiling here, then they have a ceiling, as Greg always likes to say, no ceiling. No right? Check ceiling. out check out our sponsors uh, for this episode: getsalise.com. Use the code Five RSN City Cigar Lounge. 
right down the street from the arena, cpt-florida.com. That's CPT of South Florida, particularly if you need security help uh, for your business. We know that's critical these days. And our, our watch party at Quarterdeck in Davie tomorrow for Celtics Heat. You know that we've done this episode. Bam's going for 32. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.